Yesterday, a sixth person died in the UK after contracting coronavirus. He was in his 80s and in one of the age groups deemed most at risk from the virus. Well, in a moment, we'll be talking to consultant geriatrician uh, Dr Claire Steves about uh, why we need to think about the over 65s in particular right now. And is going to be here with us for that as well. But before we do, um, we're talking about children first and how to make sure they're not scared of the virus. Dr Zoe has headed to Christ the Redeemer School in Belfast, uh, who've come up with an interesting approach. Morning, Zoe. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I'm here at Christ the Redeemer School in Belfast and the whole school here have been learning about coronavirus and this class who are just about to meet have come up with a very unique way of reminding themselves exactly what they need to do. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dr Zoe. Now, that is a welcome. So I'm going to come to you very shortly so you can share with the whole nation what you've been doing. But first, your teacher, Miss McCune. Good morning. Good morning. So you teach this class who are aged seven and eight. I do, yes. And over the past couple of weeks, they've become very inquisitive about coronavirus. So what have you been teaching them? Basically, the children have been coming in asking lots of questions about coronavirus. So we've been keeping the message simple, following the public health agency advice. Uh, we're reminding the children to wash their hands. We're asking them to cover their mouth whenever they cough or sneeze and put it immediately into them. And if possible, not to touch their face with their hands. That's brilliant. Really, really, really sound advice. Have you found it easy to talk to them without them getting worried or getting scared? Absolutely. Yes, we have. When our little ones come in overwhelmed or slightly worried, it's our job to share our calm with them. So here in school, we're very honest with them. We tell them exactly what coronavirus is and we don't need to worry. One of the biggest things I have seen change within the classroom is just yesterday, one of my little ones coughed and her little friend reminded her to wash her hands. Now, to me, that is the children taking ownership themselves of their own learning, which is fantastic. It's brilliant. It's very empowering for them as it well. Is, yes. Now, it wasn't you that came up with the song was not, that was no. in here. It was the children it themselves. Was indeed, yes. So we're going to come and speak to some of the children. This is Nathan, and you're eight, aren't you, Nathan? Yes. And what have you learnt to do to protect yourself from germs? I've learnt to cover my mouth when I'm coughing, and we're a healthy eating school, so we eat bananas and apples, and we also do mile a day outside in the mornings. Brilliant. That's all about having a healthy immune system so that you can fight off bugs. Yes. Excellent. Well done. Thank you, Nathan. So I'm going to come and have a chat now with Maeve. And Maeve, tell me about washing your hands. Where do you wash your hands in the classroom? We wash our hands at the back of the room and sometimes in the bathroom too. OK, and when do you wash your hands? We wash your hands before we go out for a break and when we go to lunches or dinners. And anything different in the classroom or the playground? Um, in the playground, I'm not allowed to hold hands or hug each other anymore. Oh, is that is that sad or is it OK? It's OK. It's OK, all right. And then we're going to come across to Adam here. Adam, tell me, what's been the most fun thing about learning how to protect yourself? Um, that we'll get to wash our hands more often. Oh, do you like washing your hands, do you? Great. And do you know how long you have to wash your hands for? About 20 seconds. Brilliant. Great. OK, then. Well, without further ado, I think it's about time we share with the nation this very unique way. Um, I don't think people will be forgetting this for quite some time. So shall we start after three? One, two, three. Wash your hands. 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 Bring that one for quite some time to come. Yeah, oh, that's, that's an earworm in it my is. head right now. It's the song that gets stuck in your head more than anything else, so it's good that it's reminding you to wash your hands. Brilliant idea. Will thank you. you. Uh, will you please thank everyone there? They were brilliant this morning. Yeah, thank lovely. You, thank you. Uh, right, we're joined now by consultant geriatrician uh, Dr Claire Steves, uh, alongside her Deirdre. Uh, the headlines this morning, uh, six deaths confirmed in the UK. Total number of people infected uh, is 373 in this country. NHS is preparing to test 10,000 people a day for coronavirus. Tonight's Premier League game between Manchester City and Arsenal has been postponed as a precautionary measure. More than 130 UK passengers from the quarantine cruise ship Grand Princess are on a flight back to Britain. The foreign officers said they'll be required to self-isolate for 14 days. And also, Health Minister Nadine Dorres is the first MP to be diagnosed with coronavirus. She tweeted, thanks for so many good wishes. 
It's been pretty rubbish, but I hope, I hope I'm over the worst of it now. I'm more worried about my 84-year-old mum who is staying with me and oh, began dear. with the cough today. She's being tested tomorrow. Keep safe and keep washing those hands, everyone. And Deirdre, you know, it, that, that Nadine Doris tweet and the, and the sentiment behind that is what's concerning you. You should have been on a cruise. Oh, yeah, I, I should have been on a cruise, but my husband, like me, is 74. He has COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary yeah. disease, and it just made him vulnerable. It's actually talking to Dr Zoe last week when I was here last Friday, and she said, don't risk it, you know, I might be fine. Just too big a risk for him. So we cut that out of our lives. So that's sad, so that's a week's yeah, holiday yeah. gone. You can't claim the insurance on it, but, you know, it seemed a good choice to make. But then friends were meant to be coming this weekend. They were skiing in Italy last week, mm. so now they can't come. It's, I think it's really impacting on people very directly now. And do you feel that up until this point, people haven't been taking it as seriously as they should have been? Absolutely. I mean, I've been worried for a while and thinking people should have... You know, why aren't we just staying home more and taking the precautions? I mean, there, there seems to be no point in waiting to, to take care, let's get on with it. Mm. Um, but I was quite dismayed, you know, talking to, you know, people at the local gym and they aren't really bothering about the hand washing. They're saying, oh, no, we can't all, you know, I won't get everyone to do that. We should all be taking this mm. seriously. It mm. does matter. Or to the point where you've said, well, I'm not going again then until you sort out Yes, your exactly. Yeah, and I just think, why would I take that risk? And I told my husband about it and he's, you know, obviously he's frightened. Yeah, for sure. And do you think that's the thing, that there's a bit of a age thing here, where those are going, well, if I get it, it's just going to be like getting a cold or a flu. I might and not I even have any symptoms. I'm fine. Teenagers as well, and those sort of young people, they're sort of, oh, you know, it's all going to be OK. And there are even people trying to say it's a load of hype, aren't there? Mm. Which I've heard people say, and you just think, it, it so isn't. You know, mm. it's, and it's very practical. I love the way Zoe was talking to the children, because if you reduce it to these practical things, it's washing your hands, staying a little distance yeah. from one another. It's not stuff we can do. Yeah. Stuff we can do. Um, and... Um, I know that there's a little bit of confusion uh, about... The, we hear the term underlying medical conditions. So what are the underlying medical conditions? Why are the elderly more at risk? What is it that puts them at risk? Well, it's certainly true that people over 80 are much more at risk from this virus than um, younger people. And it's also people that have conditions like heart disease, uh, people who have chronic obstructive lung disease or other pulmonary diseases that may be particularly at risk of getting very severely ill. And so it's really important that at this moment that we all group together as a society and make sure we protect the most vulnerable people. So how do you protect them? I mean, the last thing they want is people grouping together. I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming that... Uh, that you, what is your advice? If you're watching this now... Um, do you stay home on your own? Are you very, very wary of people who come round to see you? Grandchildren, perhaps? Um, how do you protect yourself from a loving family? So, at the moment, our chief medical officer is advising that people need to take necessary precautions and, uh, and wash their hands, but at the moment, they don't need to isolate themselves. Having said that, they have said that it's not going to be long now before maybe people with health conditions do need to isolate. And so, this is really the time now to all be thinking about who is most vulnerable in our populations, who is older, who maybe has those medical conditions, and how can they be supported? Do they have the network in place to support support them. Uh, do they have the backup network as well, just in case that network gets unwell? So what should that network look like? Because, you know, I've got my mum's older than me, um, older than me, obviously, but she's <laughs> old, she's sort of 72. Uh, so she's sort of creeping up into that age bracket and my dad. And I think, right, what should I be... As a, as a daughter, because I want to look after them, should I be making sure they've got enough food in? I mean, you don't want to add to this panic of stockpiling. Should I be... What does that infrastructure around them look like? What can we be doing? So I think the advice is that nobody needs to go out stockpiling, but we do need to think about if someone needs to isolate, who's going to get the shopping? And also, um, do, we, do we have a backup plan in terms of if they need more support, can they ring somebody else? So now is really the time to be sharing phone numbers with people, mm -hmm. going and, and, and sharing phone numbers with your neighbours. that it's community, yeah, isn't With it, your really? community, really bringing us together. We're going to get through this if we stick together and support I each other. I think you've got to be careful as well. See, I do, a, I do a, an elderly neighbour shopping for her. She's housebound. But, you know, I'm thinking now, when I get the shopping, I'll probably get some today. When I take it in, I need to, you know, how am I going to protect her? So I'm going to need to, what, go home, wash my hands, then take her her shopping in yeah. um, and just sort of leave it for her. And I think that's the yeah. case also with, um, with relatives. If you, if you are going round to see an elderly relative, then as you get to their house, maybe if you can get hand gel, but, uh, but you... you you clean your hands yeah. as you get to the door and, and assume that from that moment on that it's got, that's got to be a safe zone, even the door handle. 
So I think it's really important that older people aren't unsupported at this time. Obviously, older people, older people who have health conditions or who are frail do need support from people. And we mustn't not give that because otherwise they might get unwell themselves. But we need to take sensible precautions. If we're ill ourselves, we need to stay away, for sure. Mm -hmm. But we need to use hand washing and make sure we don't touch our faces. Can they take anything to boost their immune system? Can any of us take things? So there isn't any evidence that anything particularly boosts the immune system. Um, but, of course, a healthy diet uh, is a good thing to do. So making sure that people are well-provisioned yeah. with vitamins and so on over this time is a sensible precaution. Mm -hmm. But there doesn't seem to be any you know, health advice to advise any particular change in behaviour. Well, well, maybe one of the good things that will come out of this, and you mentioned it there, is that sense of community. We're very good at t in times of strife, um, in times of concern and worry at actually pulling together, aren't we? Yeah, we are. And I think it's probably actually teaching us all very good hygiene habits as yeah. well. I think yeah. it's raising everybody's game on that front. And one fact that, uh, that you know, you maybe don't hear that often, uh, which is worth bearing in mind, 65,000 people in the UK have recovered from the coronavirus. Yeah, wow. Uh, so, uh, okay. you know, that's one that's maybe not pointed out very often.